when Jesus shuts the door. There comes a time when some things end and others begin. We've all heard that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and we want to be ready when he does. But when he does, the door will be shut. It will be the end of a period of time. It will be the end of an age, the age of grace when the fullness of the Gentiles come in, as we see in Romans 11:25, the focus will return to the Jews. Just like in the days of Noah, after all that were gathered into the ark were safe inside, Jesus shuts the door. Genesis 7:16, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. The Holy Bible shares with us that there will be a time of coming just like the days of Noah, when judgment will be poured out upon the earth. We see this in the book of Luke chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And just like back in the days of Noah, there is a rescue before the destruction. Notice that when the Lord shut the door to the ark, the opportunity to be saved was gone. Jesus not only shuts the door, Jesus is the door. Look at this. Let's look in the book of John chapter 10 and let's pick it up at verse one. Listen to what Jesus says here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is an hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. See, this is a relationship. He knows us and we know him. As the father knows me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is a reference to us, the Gentiles. Remember, the gospel was preached first to the Jews. And that's who Jesus is talking to here and then to the Gentiles. We're the other fold. Therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again? No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. So 
Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus is the door through which we can be saved. Can't be saved any other way. We are warned that there is a thief out there and that thief is coming to steal and to kill and to destroy. But the Lord comes so that we might have life in that life more abundantly. Amen. Now, Jesus illustrates here in Luke chapter 13 that he is the master of the house that will rise up and shut the door. Luke 13. Let's pick it up at verse 22. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Many will seek to enter in and will be able to until the time when the master of the house shuts the door. Once the door is shut, folks will be begging to get in, but the door will remain shut. Verse 26, then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. Do you see this? They've had meals together and even listened to his teachings. Just being around Jesus and listening to him teach doesn't save you. Just ask Judas. Being in the literal presence of the Lord does not save us. Just ask the one thief on the cross that did not believe. Going to church and serving here and there does not save you. Verse 27. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Jesus warns that he is coming back. We need to be ready. We see this again when the door will be shut. Matthew 25. Let's pick this up at verse one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Soon the door will be shut on this age of grace. Don't be on the other side of the door when Jesus shuts that door. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us upon that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. 
Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this, Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.